revelation of it, Lord God. Thank you that this word will encourage us to go on in you and the things of God and to yeah. keep on pressing toward the mark of a higher call in you, Lord God, to move on in the things of God in Jesus' name. I thank you that our eyes will be open, our understanding will be enlightened, Lord God. I say in the name of Jesus, this word will be fruitful in our lives, we'll be doers of it and not just hearers in Jesus' name, deceiving our own selves. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for ears that are prepared to hear already. And I thank you that you give me a message to give to those ears in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. Jesus. I thank you that nothing shall by any means hinder this word from going forth. Not one word will fall to the ground. We thank you and we praise you for the power of it in the mighty and glorious and awesome name of Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Look at that person next to you and say, hello, good looking. Hello, good looking. Oh, man, y'all said it's so weak. Look at, don't you think your cousin is good looking, sister? I'm trying to say it's so. <laughs> well, praise God. Let's go to Proverbs 23. And we're going to take up where we left off before our Easter season began. Our Easter season was last week, and we jumped off into the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, that cross message is something else, wasn't it? Amen. Made you think about Jesus Christ. Well, that was my intent, to make you think about Jesus Christ. Amen. It was him that hung on the cross. Amen. Not us. Amen. Thank God we weren't hanging up there. I don't think we would have endured for one another. Amen. Well, I did ask the question last week, was nobody willing to do it? Amen. So, we know we wouldn't have did it. Amen. Amen. But that's, that's why we ought to thank Jesus so much more. Amen. Praise God. I know you're moving up. Uh, is, is it that people are hard to hear or is there something wrong with these first three seats? Is something, are they okay? I mean, all of them sit just like the other ones. <laughs> Praise God. All right, here we go. Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is who? Eat. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Glory to God. Y'all said, man, we've been on that so long, I can quote it. Well, quote it. Quote it, Bill. Quote it, Eric. Uh, or as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Uh, we haven't been on it long enough. Let's go. Yeah. I thought we had been on it long enough. We haven't been on it. Come on. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Glory to God. Y'all say, what, what, what else can we get out of that? There's more we can get out of that. Amen. Exactly. All this time we've been on it is more we can get out of it. Amen. You want to see what we can get out of it? Yes. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Let's go see what we can get out of it. <laughs> How much time I got? Because somebody might. If you got your stones, I don't mind if they hit the ground right now. <laughs> I don't mind if you drop them right now. I know you didn't bring them to hit me if you drop them right now. <laughs> Did nobody bring no stones? Amen. Did nobody bring no stones? Amen. Write down this word. Pastor. P-A-S-T-O-R. Pastor. Write this word down. Pastor. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Did you see the smile on my face? Very confident, huh? Amen. I done heard from God. Right. Uh oh, it's God. I love hearing from God. I tell you, you know, it's, you, you ever, sometimes you ever get to the point in your life where you want to do your own thing and you want to do it so bad that God tells you to do something else, you say, but God. Amen. You know, God tells you to do something, you go, but God. Amen. But when you get to the point in your life where you love hearing from God so much, Tell them butts is out of the way. Amen. You just go and do what he say? Amen. Watch this. I'm, I did what he said. Amen. Pastor. To tend a flock. This is the definition for pastor. To tend a flock. Pasture it. P-A-S-T-U-R-E. Pasture it. To graze. If I'm going too fast, I'm going to go back over them anyway. To rule, <laughs> to associate as a friend, mm. to associate as a friend. Oh, man. The next definition is shepherd. There was a lot of definitions, but I just chose a few. Amen. The next definition is keep company with, mm. to keep company with. Ooh, we. 
Does everybody have that or do I need to go back over it? Everybody got it? Go back over it? The last one. Keep company with. All right, go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Oh, I love this word so much, I tell you. I just love it. Amen. I just simply love it. What has caused a person to love the word so much? How, Paul said, you love the word? What caused you to love the word? How come you love it? Because it's, it's true? That's a good answer. Because it's true. You love the word, Brother Floyd? Amen. Why do you love the word? Because you've seen it change your life and you've seen it work. You love the word, Vera? Why do you love the word? Because you read it all the time, so you just read it so much that you just start to love it. You love the word, Brother Jack? Why do you love the word? Because it's a part of God. Amen. You love the word, Pam? Why do you love the word? All of the above, huh? You love the word, Gwen? You love the word? Why do you love the word? Because it's true? We all know it's true, amen? Yeah. Let's look at some things that are true here. Okay. <laughs> Verse 20. <laughs> Verse 20. Now the God of peace that is brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus. Who did he bring from the dead? Our Lord Jesus. Who brought him from the dead? God. That great what? Shepherd. What is Jesus then? A great shepherd. What kind of shepherd? A great shepherd. Say that then. Jesus is the great shepherd. Somebody say Jesus is the great shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Whose blood of the everlasting covenant? Jesus. Jesus' is blood. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. 1 Peter 5. We see that Jesus was what kind of shepherd? What kind of shepherd was he? Great shepherd. We saw that in the Bible, in the Word of God, that Jesus was the great shepherd. Hallelujah. Don't y'all thank God for the great shepherd? Amen. I really praise God for the great shepherd. Jesus was the great shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's look at verse uh, 4 in 1 Peter 5. And when the chief, what? Shepherd. Shall appear... Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Who is the chief shepherd? Jesus. First, we saw that he was what kind of shepherd? Great. And second, we saw that he's what kind of shepherd? Jesus. He's the chief shepherd. And who are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ. What did the chief shepherd come to do? That the law. What? Save the lost. Amen, Ricky. What else did he come to do? Do what? Lead to lead us. Amen. What else did he come to do? Give us power. Give us power. Okay. What else did he come to do? Give us life. Give us life. Well, we can think of a lot of reasons that the Amen. great shepherd came. Amen. Amen. I want to focus on one. Though. Let's go to Matthew 16. Thank you for those answers. I totally agree with all of them. But I want to establish something here today. A very familiar scripture, but ain't nothing going, nothing wrong with going over familiar scripture. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the familiar ones that you get to know. Yeah. Well, come on, man. I thought everybody at Matthew 16. I thought everybody knew already uh, Proverbs 23 and 7. But I see we haven't quite gotten it down yet. Amen. After nine weeks. Amen. But that's okay. We're going to get it. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's look at one of the reasons, along with the other reasons that I got that Jesus came to, uh, to be the great shepherd. He says unto them, but whom, verse 15, he says unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my what? Church. So what do y'all think the great shepherd came to do? Build a church. To build a church. That's one other thing we can see that he came to do. Amen, Vera? Amen. He came to build a church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. I, I started a foundation, Ricky. I'm building right now on that foundation. Amen. Amen. The first few little scriptures. <laughs> Put this on down, though. <laughs> 
I love this kind of message. I just love it. We see that Jesus, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, came to establish a church. He came to build a church. And he said that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. That's what Jesus said. They will not prevail against it. Now, since we know that Jesus came to establish a church, and we know that Jesus is the great shepherd, and we know that Jesus is the chief shepherd, since we know all of these things, do y'all think that he needs pastors to run his churches now, today? Amen. 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 Do you think so? Yes. But he's the great shepherd. Why would he need another pastor to run the church? He's the great shepherd. That's what pastor means, shepherd, right? Amen. Well, if he's the great shepherd, why do he need another pastor to run his church? Can't he run his church? Didn't he start him? Yeah. Can't he run him? He's a man to run his church. How come? person here, flesh and blood. How come? It's an example so we have someone to follow. Amen. Do y'all agree with that? Amen. Do y'all agree with that? Amen. Everybody ain't saying nothing, Ralph, so I don't think everybody agree with you. Oh, well. Amen. <laughs> Ralph, oh, well. Amen. Paul, so you think, you think God needs a shepherd here to run his church now, a pastor? Why? Because, I mean, he's, I, would, I would think that he's... No, don't back up your <laughs> He, he sees everything. I mean, I see that he, he can do everything, but he can't physically help the people that are on, that are on the earth. He can't physically help the people that are on the earth? I mean, he needs somebody to... Needs, wait, 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 Paul. He needs somebody here to... 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 Um, to take care of the needs of the people here on earth. Do it, Paul. Take care of the needs of the people here on the earth. So the Lord got something different. <laughs> brother Floyd had something different. Brother Eric got something. What, what are you finna say, brother? I think it's just like uh, he, he needs to delegate the authority, you know, like how Moses did when he was with the Israelites and all that. He needs to delegate the authority. He needs somebody to delegate some authority to, to do what? To work through. Yeah, amen. To work through. <laughs> to work through, Jack, that's what you was gonna say? And brother, brother Gary was gonna say what, brother Gary? Same, same, same as he said? No. Okay, here we go. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. <coughs> Glory to God. Let's go to Ephesians 4. We're going to ask a few questions. I already know that, brother. I'm already familiar. Yeah, that's why you ain't doing nothing with yourself. Because yeah. you already know everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. That's one of the reasons he sent a jump because you know what? An uh, average Christian won't talk to another Christian like that. Amen. But a pastor will. Amen. He'll go ahead and tell it like it is, whether you like it or not. Amen. Amen. Don't make no difference. Amen. Well. Don't make no difference. Amen. <laughs> so who gave us pastors? Why do we have pastors? We, we gave a reason we have, but who gave them to us? God. 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 Where? What does it say in the Bible? In the uh, you mean First Corinthians twelve twenty eight? Twelve twenty eight. God said some of the church first apostles, prophets, teachers. Pastors are not in there. <gasps> Where, brother Gary? And and uh, right here in Ephesians, if you start from verse ten, it goes okay. right here where he says he gave, and then verse eleven you got the what he gave. Amen, brother Gary. Gonna get in my message now. Okay, well, let's see who gave pastors to us. Amen? Amen. Let's start at verse 7. Ephesians 4 and verse 7. We already know this. Just keep looking. I'm going to see if you already know it. Amen. I'm going to see if you already know this scripture. Sure, we done read it a thousand times. That don't mean you know it. Amen. 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 All right, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given, is given grace according to the measure of the what? Yeah. Of the what? Yeah. Of the what? Come on, say yeah. The gift. The gift of who? Right. What gift is he talking about? Grace. Grace? He's Ricky going like this, Dad. He gave us to us an office. He gave oh. all of us something different to do. He gave us all something different to do? Yeah. What was he saying, Ricky? He gave unto us an office. Put the camera on her hand. <laughs> I like that, Ricky. That's cute. Forget it? Okay. 
<laughs> but did you get that hand back? Well, oh, I like that. Praise God. Let's look at what gifts he gave us. Verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave what? Gifts. Yeah. Gifts unto who? Yeah. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above heaven, all heavens, that he might fill all things. Verse 11. And he gave what? Well, would these, these things right here be, be declared as the gifts? Amen. Oh, yeah. You think so? Why? Why? They're necessary for the church. That's what, but how, how do you know that this is what he gave for gifts? Yeah. It says it right there. Don't get yeah. deep on me, Ralph. It says it right there. <laughs> and he gave some, and he gave some, and he gave some, and he gave some, and he gave some. Amen. What did he give first? Apostle. And what did he give second? Apostle. And what did he give third? Apostle. And what did he give fourth? And teachers. And teachers. So. How did the pastors get here and, and all that good stuff? God gave us. Does it say right here that God gave us? Yeah. Does it say that? No. It said Jesus Christ gave them, amen? amen. So are we in agreement that Jesus Christ gave pastors? Amen. Are we in agreement that Jesus Christ gave apostles? Amen. Are we in agreement that Jesus Christ gave prophets and evangelists and teachers? Amen. Are we in agreement? Amen. Well, the word of God right here, according to what I'm reading, and I'm standing to be corrected if I'm wrong. Classify these people as gifts. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. So, Eric, if I was to took some money out of my pocket and I said, Eric, I want to give you this ten dollars. Would you take it? Would you take this ten dollars? I put it. Hold your hand out. If I put it in your hand, don't snatch it now. If I put it in your hand, would you take it? Now, Eric, if I tell you I'm gonna give you this and you won't put your hand out to take it, good. what's the problem? That's good. What, what, what? Say that again? Something's wrong. Something's seriously wrong. Put my money back in my pocket. Make Something is seriously wrong. If I'm, off, if I'm offering him a gift, I'm not asking him to do nothing for the gift. I'm just right. offering it to him. You see what I'm saying, Gwen? I'm saying, I'm going to give you this $10 if you want it. Amen. But every turn around and tell me, I don't want it. Something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. According to verse 7 through 11, we see according to the word of God that God gave us gifts. Amen. Now, the thing we need to ask is, why did he give us the gifts of a pastor? That's what I'm focusing on. Why did he do that? What for? What's for why he gave us the gifts? Yeah, why did he give us the gifts? Well, just one of them, all of them. What? You can use either one of them you want. They all is working for God. But why did he, he give them? He gave them to us so that the church could function. So that the church could function and what else? Edify the body of the church. Edify the body. Brother Gary, you've been reading this already. You know this, right? <laughs> you scared to say he knows. <laughs> you should be scared, brother, because before I get through, you're going to say, well, I thought I knew it, brother. All right, there are seven reasons why he gave us pastors. Let's look, we're going to focus on pastors today. All right. You know why? Because I'm a pastor, that's why. Amen. So we're going to focus on that today. <laughs> I might be some of these other things, too. Amen. I believe I'm a teacher. I believe that. Amen. Amen. All right, number one, for the perfecting of the saints, according to verse 12. Let's read verse 12 through uh, 15. Here we go. For the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the what? For the edifying of the what? Body. For the body of Christ, till we all come into the what? Unity of faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, and unto a perfect man, and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of cunning men, of a man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. What's the first reason that he gave us pastors? What's the second reason he gave us pastors? Work of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. What's the third reason he gave us pastors? For the edifying of the body of Christ. What's the fourth reason? Uh oh, the voice got a little lower that time. Say it again. So we can all come into the unity of the faith. What's number five? 
So we can come into the knowledge of the Son of God, who Jesus Christ is. What's number six? To help us to mature. What's number seven? So that we're not taught no more hints for growth. <laughs> Nobody stand up for Brother Trey. <laughs> come on, saints. Are y'all with me or what? Yeah. Number six is to bring us to maturity. Number seven is to bring us into the full stature of Jesus Christ. I gotta move on because my time's going so fast. I thank God one day I don't want to rush and half give out the meat that I'm receiving. Amen. But I asked a question a few minutes ago. I asked Eric, if I give you this gift and you don't take it, something's wrong. I just showed you in the Word of God where God, Jesus Christ, gave us the gift. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, preachers, whatever you want to call it. God gave them. Jesus gave them, right? Amen. And they are classified as what? Yeah. Yeah. Gifts. And if he gave them to the church for gifts, something is wrong if you won't receive the gift. Amen. 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 You see what I'm getting at, Paul of Faith? Right. Something is wrong if I put that money in every hand and he said, no, I don't want it. Now, examination. For what reason wouldn't you take money if I try to give you money? If I just say, here, Roxanne, if you can have this $10, it's yours. For what reason wouldn't you take that money? I don't you don't know? If I tried to give you some money, what, for what reason wouldn't you take this money? There wouldn't be no reason I wouldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. If I tried to give you this money, for what reason wouldn't you take this money? I don't think I'm fool to take your money. Why? It's money. It's free. I ain't no strings attached. I'm just going to put it in your hand if you want it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Amen. Some people are proud. That's a cool. I love that answer. God, I love that answer. Boy, I love that answer. She said, some people are proud and they love working for their own money. Ooh, that's a good answer. God, you know what? God told you to say that. You'll see in a minute. God told you to say that, sister. Oh, man. Man, Ralph, watch this. If I offered you $10 and you didn't take it, what would be wrong? What, why wouldn't you take the money? Well, I don't believe the gift is, is real. I don't you, you don't believe it's real? No, I don't believe that the gift is... It's Wait a minute. Don't this look like a real $10 bill to you? It is, but I don't believe... You it's think it's an imitation? No, but I don't think it's for me. If, if you I don't think it's for you? If I wouldn't accept I wouldn't think it's for me. I thought, you know, let me, let, I'll tell you, I'll take out a dollar, because if I have a dollar, <laughs> the Holy Spirit tell me to give, I don't mind giving a dollar, but I'm going to keep my ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared he's going to tell me to give it. No, I'm not that tight demon in Jesus' name. If, uh, <laughs> Jack, you caught it. No, I still got a one dollar bill in my hand. Uh, now, if I offer you this dollar bill, and... You don't take it. What's wrong? Why won't you take this money that I'm giving you as a gift? Because you already got some. I already got some too. You offer me some money. <laughs> offer me some. <laughs> come on, y'all. We're being realistic. Come on, Paul. Come on, Charlene. You remind me of a friend I have. Just like that, I'm always wanting to give them something, but mm -hmm. they never will receive from me because, like, they, they don't feel worth it or something. Or I'm, I'm not like if I want to buy them a dress or something. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't do that for me. Hmm. Something's yeah, wrong somewhere. You never know if somebody's trying to buy you. If they just give you a, a, some money, you say they might be trying to buy you, so you don't take it. You're suspicious uh, of their motive. Yeah, right. You're suspicious of their motive. Because they don't know your heart? Okay. And you don't know their heart? Okay. You haven't learned to receive. Ooh. Wait a minute, brother. Come on back and say that one more time. Please, please say that one more time. You haven't learned to receive. You haven't learned to receive. Amen. And some people got too much pride. That's why they won't receive. They got too much pride. Amen. Some people just haven't learned to receive. Amen. God trying to give you a free gift and you don't want it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Switch from the money, didn't it? God, a place, a gift in the church. The people have such a hard time receiving that gift. Uh oh. And you know what? You hit the nail right smack that on the head. When a person is all lifted up in pride, they know everything, can't nobody tell them nothing, they won't receive no gift. Amen. 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 
when a person don't know how to receive, man, God is still trying to give to them. No, God, that's okay. I don't want it. I remember when I first started working on cars, mechanics. Man, the Lord has sent somebody along so I can do a job and make some good money. And then when it comes time to get paid, I didn't have sense enough, didn't know how to receive. I said, oh, no, that's okay. And was hungry. <laughs> Starving. Didn't even have no gas to put in my own car. I tell my, oh, no, that's okay. Something wrong with that, John. Something is wrong with that. Somebody want to give you something and you won't take it. Something wrong there. Uh, All right. Now, we looked at our reasons, and I like the reason that uh, Gwen gave. I like the reason that Drake gave me. I know the reason that's going to go right along with what we're going to look at right here. Y'all say y'all know these scriptures? Come on. <coughs> Let's see how well you know them. Let's see how well. Why wouldn't a person receive this gift that God is trying to give them? We're talking about the gift of a pastor right now. We said, why wouldn't a person receive that? Number one, in verse 14. Look what verse 14 says. No, yeah, 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Number one reason is immaturity. Ooh, that's heavy. Immaturity. Where did I get that from? In the first part of verse 14. That we be henceforth no more children. You see that, Jack? You got a childless mind. You can't receive God trying to give you something and you can't receive it. Childless mind. You still a baby in the Lord. Amen. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Ain't nobody got to agree. You still, you still a baby in, the, in your mind. You don't know how to receive yet. God is trying to show you, hey, I'm giving you a gift, but you can't receive it because you still like a child. Amen. Oh, I ain't through yet. Y'all going to be showing up quiet. <laughs> going to be quiet for real. Well. Number two. Number two reason, double-minded. <laughs> double-minded. Double-mindedness. Where did I get that from? The same verse. Tossed to and fro. Sometimes you believe the pastor sent from God, sometimes you don't. Sometimes the pastor's okay, sometimes he's not. You double-minded. Oh, it's quiet. No amen. <laughs> I told y'all to drop the stones before I got started this. Y'all thought y'all knew this verse, didn't you? It's easy to look at that and look at somebody else, but what we need to look at now is ourselves. Amen. Uh -oh. Double-minded. Let's go over to James 1, quickly. Keep your finger here. We're going to come back. Oh, man. <laughs> double-minded. Come on, let's go look at it. Let's go see what double-mindedness is, just in case somebody is wondering what it is. Keep your finger where you are. Let's go over here. But well, that'll stop you from receiving a gift. Didn't, didn't you just say that, Rob said? Didn't you and Gwen just say that? You don't know a person's motive. You're thinking, I want the money, I need the money, but... Uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't know their motive. Uh -oh. So what do you do? You let them keep the gift. They're trying to give it to you, but you don't really know what's going on, so you let them keep it. This yes, man. That's how you was when you first came to the Bible? Wait a minute. I want you to tell off on yourself. <laughs> Hold on. I want, to, I want you to hear yourself on the radio today. That's how I was when I came to the body. Your Sister Carol was, and everybody in the body was giving me love, and I couldn't receive it because I was like, you know, what you want in return from me? Because when you're out in the world, when people, you know, give you something, they expect something back in return. And that's the way I was when I first came here. And then when I didn't have food, <laughs> when I didn't have food and then I was in that pride, I would sit at home and wouldn't, you know, would do without because I had too much pride to call and ask somebody. Mm -hmm. And then one time when Sister Rick and Brother uh, Gary was trying to help me, they wanted to bless me mm -hmm. and, you know, with whatever I needed. You know, I had so much pride that I, you know, sat in the back seat of that car with shame and, you know, crying about it because I couldn't receive. Mm -hmm. And it was just hard. You know how to receive now? Amen. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you get tired of starving, you start receiving, amen? Amen. Let's look at it right here. Let's look at it. Double-minded. That'll stop you from receiving the gift. God done bless you with a pastor, a man of God you can't receive because you double-minded. Uh-oh. Right. Oh, he's okay sometimes. Sometimes I wonder about this dude. Yeah. He seems like you're okay, but... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, double-minded. All right. God can't do nothing with you. Amen. Look what it says right here. Look what it says. Verse 5, James 1 and 5. 
If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, but he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let that man think, let that, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Is that, do, do y'all need me to interpret that? No. Do I need to interpret what they're saying? It's very clear, ain't it? Amen. God said, don't let that man think he's going to receive nothing from me. The next verse. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Yes. Amen. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded woman is unstable in all her ways. When you double-minded, you are unstable. Yes. Yes. Somebody want to give you a gift. Well, I don't know. Amen. God says, I want to give you a gift. Well, I don't know. That ain't you, Lord, did that. Praise God, brother. Let's look at the rest of this. I know you don't want that to be you, Jack. Double-minded. That will stop you from receiving a gift. Mm. Boy, y'all quiet. Mm. I know, you know what? I know that y'all love me. I just appreciate y'all's love so much. Amen. 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 Y'all gonna still love me after this, amen? Amen. <laughs> the third reason, the third reason is not able to hear from God not able to hear from God. Where did I get that from? The same verse. Carried about with every wind of doctrine. Do you know what I'm talking about when he says that, Didi? Do you know what he's talking about? Do you know what he's talking about, Brother Floyd? What is he talking about? You hear one thing and you say, oh yeah, that was good. Then you go somewhere and you hear something else. And, yeah, yeah, that sounds better than what I heard before. Well, you know you read on the nail, brother. You read on the nail. You know what? You know what? You know what? When God gives you a gift and you won't take it, you start looking for other. Amen. Amen. Uh, you hear what Amen. I say, Rick? Your husband is good to you, but you can't receive that. You don't know how to receive the goodness that he's been to you, so you start looking around. Hey, baby. Oh, man. Whoa. You throwing eyes at other folks. Because oh, <laughs> you don't know how to receive the goodness God done bless you with. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same way in the body of Christ. God will bless you with a man of God, but you don't know how to receive, so you out here looking for everything else. All right. Listen, every time Dick and Harry, they got a voice. And they carry you to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Yo, oh, show this quiet. I'm not talking to nobody in here, am I? No. I think I am. No. I think I'm talking to somebody in here. Oh, it's a shoe fit where? Oh, oh, oh. I heard this preacher say this, and I heard that guy on TV or the radio say that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Don't know what to believe. Amen. Ooh, it's quiet. Amen. I'm not trying to, you know, start nothing. I'm just trying to do what the Lord told me to do. Amen. Started way back Thursday, uh, Eric. I was at this minister's meeting, and he just started speaking. I'm saying, Lord, what are you talking about? <laughs> he made it plain. <laughs> Listen to me. When God bless you with a gift, learn how to receive it. Amen. Learn how to receive it. I know people are a little bit leery nowadays because of all of the mess that's going on and, you know, different cults and stuff. But you ought to have enough spirit of God on the inside of you to know what's real and what's not. Amen. Isn't that right, Jack? Amen. If you don't have enough spirit of God on the inside of you to know what's real and what's not, then there's something wrong with you. You. Amen. Amen. Something wrong with you if you can't tell what's right and what's Amen. wrong. Amen. It's you that you need to look at if you can't tell what's right and what's wrong. Amen. What did God say? We are not ignorant to say the devices. Yeah. Amen. It's something wrong with you if you can't tell what's wrong and what's right. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but that's okay. I'm gonna still tell the truth. What you say right. Amen. Amen. Number four. Number four. You are more easily moved by what other people say than what your own pastor says. Ooh, this great revelation. You know who do that real good? My wife. Anytime we go to a speak the word, a living word, or some of these other, man, she'll go buy all them tapes, man. I said, ooh, look at this woman into this word. I said, honey, did you listen to last Sunday's message? Well, no. Well, why not? Uh... <laughs> What did Jesus say? A prophet 
is without honor save for in his own house. Mm. Brother Floyd got ready to get up and teach Friday night. Ricky, remember how quiet it was? Mm -hmm. Remember when nobody said nothing when he first started? Mm. Remember how everybody just sitting there looking? But then when God started using him like a mighty teacher, huh. all that stuff came down. Say that. Amen. People don't want to recognize what they got right in the midst of them. Amen. God give us a great teacher right here because of things that's going on in his life. We want to prejudge. Amen. Oh, man. Say that, Pastor. Uh-oh. Make it plain. Now. We want to prejudge. That's right. Uh-oh. God put a call on his life to teach. We don't want to accept it because he's only been saved for a year. Say what? Amen. Say that. So what? Amen. God ain't no respect of person. Amen. That's right. Neither respect of age. Amen. Bless you with somebody in the midst, you got to receive it. Amen. If Scott can sing, Scott can sing. Amen. No matter who like it or don't like it. That's right. When God placed gifts in the midst of us, let's receive the gift. Amen. If he received it, place a pastor in the front of you, receive the pastor. Amen. Don't be going around always, well, he this and he that. That's right. <laughs> Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question. Why is it so easy to talk about the past? Because he's in the limelight. Because he's in the limelight? He's in the front of everybody. And everybody's always watching his example. Well, so is the praise and worship leader. But we're following the past. But we're following the past? Following, we're because you're following the past is the reason he's so easy to chop up? Oh, man. <laughs> what you say, kid? Some people think. Huh? Some people. To some people? Because he's in the front. You know, people are always looking for fault in the past because... He's supposed to be representing Jesus, so since he's in front, people are looking for him. They're expecting him to fall. Okay, I'll agree with that. Mark said something to me one night. I took Mark home. We were sitting in the van. Mark said to me one night, you know, before I gave my life to the Lord, he said, I watched you for nine months looking for every little thing I could pick apart. <laughs> Everything. He said, I watched you carefully just to see what I could find you doing wrong. I think people come in the body like that. Amen. Amen. Come in the body looking for something. Amen. Amen. Brother uh, Miller, I sure wish he was here this morning. Praise God. Brother Miller said to me uh, two weeks ago, he said, Brother, I've been a part of this church for, I've been coming to this church for about nine months now, and I haven't joined. And I said, why haven't you joined, Brother Miller? He said, well, man is so imperfect. Man got so many faults. <laughs> I said, well, don't join this one then, because I got faults too. Amen. Don't join this one. And he was uh, doing the same thing Mark was doing, looking for every little thing that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me tell y'all something. Don't look hard. You can find something wrong with me real easy. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Weigh this out. When you go somewhere and find a perfect pastor, come back and let me know so I can go serve him too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead, let me know. I want to find him. I ain't found him yet. Amen. I've been serving God most, longer than most of y'all, but I haven't found one yet. All right. If you're looking for faults, you're looking at the man and you're not looking at the gift. That's right. Go ahead, old Charlie. Woo! Say that again, sister. If you're looking at uh, the person, the man's faults, you're not looking at the gift God gave you. You're just looking at the flesh. Looking at the flesh. Mm. Let me tell y'all something. Ain't none of y'all around either. Amen. <laughs> Ain't none of us arrive, amen? amen? So, when I do something wrong, pray for me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. When I make it, pray for me, amen? amen? You dropped the stone, didn't you, Scott? You didn't bring one in, huh? Look what it says right here. Look what it says. Wow. That we henceforth be no more children. We need to grow up. Amen. Toss to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. How are you going to be carried about with every wind of doctrine? Because you listen to everybody else. I think I bring some good words. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with you listening to other people, because I listen to other people. But don't go measure what they teach or what I teach. Amen. Receive from all of them and let it go at that. Amen. You got to know how to separate the wheat from the tear. Amen. If you don't know how to separate the wheat from the tear, you need to just stay with what you're getting here. Amen. My uh, <laughs> previous mate I had said this to me one day. I was listening to the radio, and I was so fired up because I prayed this morning. But then when I started listening to the radio, this man got on there talking about all these other different things. And he said, now I'm so confused. 
Hey, if you're a baby, you don't need to be trying to eat steaks. That's right. Amen. Amen. You need to stick to the cream of wheat. Amen. 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 Stick to the cream of wheat, something you can swallow straight down. Amen. Some of y'all looking real funny. Some of y'all looking real funny in the face. Some folks talking to you, praise the Lord. Praise him. I am not repenting. I'm just doing what God told me to do. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth and love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ. My message I leave with you today. I want you to get this point. This is the message that you need to get today. If you believe that the Lord has placed a gift here for you, then respect that. Amen. Receive that. Amen. Go for it. Yes. But if you don't, then praise the Lord. Say that and move on. Amen. Oh, did nobody say nothing about yeah, Come on, man. Amen. I remember when I used to pick my pastor apart. When I had the rebellious state of him. I remember when I used to pick him apart. It's easy to do that. Amen. Did you know that, Gordon? It's easy. I could look at you just a few times I see you, and I can look hard enough and say, hmm, she got a pimple right there. Yeah. Really? You can find something wrong with anything and anybody. Amen. You can go by brand. You know what I, you know what I can do, Gary? Since I know how to paint cars, you know what I can do? I can go to a lot, and I can go look at a Mercedes, a BMW, or anything. And I promise you, I can find a flaw in the paint job. Mm. I have the ability to do that because yeah. I know cars, I know paint. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So anything, you look at a brand new car, factory painted, got flaws in it. Amen. Amen. Everybody got flaws. Everybody. Amen. Everybody. Amen. But I tell you this, watch this. The one who's talking the most is the one who's not praying at all. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Oh. Oh. Yes, oh. That's right, Pastor. I know it is. That's right. I know it is. That's the one who ain't praying. Oh. Amen. You know why I know he ain't praying? Because he's too busy talking. Amen. Amen. Oh. Excellent. Well, Excellent. praise him. Praise him. Oh. Amen. Bow your head with us. If y'all don't hit me with the stone this time, I won't do this no more. <laughs> Unless the Lord tell me. Amen. Then I'm going to do it. Some of y'all ain't shouting with me. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't shouting with me. I know why, though, but that's okay. Amen. I understand. Believe me, I do. Lord, we just thank you for your word right now, Father. We thank you for the power of your word. Thank you, Father, that your word changes our lives when we let it. And I thank you that we make a quality decision and let your word change our lives. I give you the praise, the glory, and honor, Father, for what you are doing in our lives and how you are bringing about changes. We know that your word is truth, Lord God. I thank you and I pray that these, your people, Lord God, are the foundation of this church. And I say in the name of Jesus that anything in their lives that is hindering them from going forth in you, that you would remove it, that they would allow you to remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that your word shall not and will not, and you won't allow it to return unto you void until it has done what you sent it out to do. I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're sitting here with your head bowed and your eyes closed and you don't know.